Hello everyone, uh, based on some of the feedback we got from uh, last week's video concerning kind of misconceptions as far as jamming goes, I thought we'd kind of take it to the next level and uh, take a look at DECM, which is a defensive electronic countermeasures, as well as, you know, kind of what it looks like in game versus, you know, how it performs in the actual, you know, I'm going to say real world, but obviously we've only got simulators, so we're working with what we got. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we have for our scenario today. So what I've done is I've taken a bunch of aerostats. Uh, these are pretty cool. They're basically giant balloons, nothing too, too fancy. And I've mounted each one with a different type of defensive ECM. Uh, we have one that has no DECM. We have this one up here, which is the ALQ211. That's a very, very modern system. It's got pretty much every electronic trick in the book. We have a generic system, which we're going to pretend is basically going to be a range gate pull-off system. And of course, over on the side, we have the classic ALQ131. Let's go ahead and switch to the other side real quick. I'm going to go ahead and pause. Now, DECM only works when you actually are being attacked. And one thing that you're going to see when we look at over in the simulator as well is even though we can see the target and still engage the target, it's going to be very, very different depending on what our given situation is. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll flip on my radars here and make sure that I can see everything pretty cleanly. You can see my arrow stats. Notice I have no difficulty identifying where these particular targets are. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and grab my SA-2 battery, and I'm going to go ahead and assign one missile to each one of these targets. It's going to take us a minute to actually engage these, but I want you to see what happens in command versus what happens when we go and try it over in SAM Simulator, which is going to be a very different experience for us, but at least you can understand what the crew has to go through. So the first missile's been launched. We're attacking this guy here. This is average DECM. This, remember, an SA-2 is a pretty old technology as far as radar goes, if you want to take a look. We're dealing with an old-school camera, which is 60s and 70s. Our radar itself is a 1970s device. The sensor on here is a 1980s DECM. So we're going to go ahead and launch our weapon right into him. Let's see what happens. Okay, that was a clean hit this time. So if we actually look at the end game, we can see that the first thing that happened is my DECM attempted to jam the incoming missile. Well, what happened is I needed to roll a 30% or less on basically a 100-sided dice. I rolled a 45, so the weapon missed, which means that the weapon itself then gets to do its normal attack with no modifications. Because of the distance, it was a 20, basically a 28% chance. I rolled an 8, I got a hit. So let's see what happens when we aim for the guy who does not have any ECM whatsoever. Again, this is DECM. This is an act of jamming. And it looks like we got a clean hit on this one as well because, again, there's no jamming whatsoever because nothing actually went on. So we don't actually see that calculation here. So now we're going to go ahead and attack this one. This is an ALQ-211. This is an ultra-modern system. Again, they're mounting these things on the F-16s. It's actually a coupled system, which has two different pieces to it. So watch this. Okay, take a look. So first things first, the jammer attempted to block the incoming missile. So in this case, you'll notice its final probability was a 35%, as opposed to the older system, which only had a 30% probability. So you can see we rolled our dice, we got a 64. Unfortunately, the jammy did not succeed. So uh, it was, like I said, uh, went in. So then the weapon went ahead and attacked anyway. But again, given that incredible distance, we missed, even though the jamming did nothing to the actual attack itself. Speed up time a little bit here. We have go ahead and took a few more shots there. We can see we took a few more here, and both times those were jammed. Now, what does this look like when we are inside of SamSim? And what does it look like from the SAM crew? Well, it totally depends on what type of jamming we're using to actually engage the actual target. Now, one interesting thing about command, and I just want to show this to you real fast before we go take a look at it, is there's nothing in the universe stopping me from adding more than one jamming platform onto one platform. So I can actually come in here and do something really silly, like I could take this uh, Q11. I could go to sensors and I could add like 10 different types of jamming on this thing if I wanted. You know, I could say a DECM. Whoop, helps if you spell it correctly, right? We could come over here. We could say, well, we actually want to use this advanced. We want to use this average. We want to use this simple. We're also going to do some chaff as well. Whoop, generic. Let's see here, what else can we use as far as jamming goes? I don't think we want to use too, too much of that. Actually, we'll stick with just the jamming. Now watch what happens when I take the shot. This is crazy. So I'll go ahead and unpause. Go ahead and take my sand battery. Lock onto this guy who's going to be appearing in just a moment. There he is. I'm going to go ahead and fire six missiles in his general direction. Now watch what happens here. So the missiles are all going to launch. Now look here. 
you can see that each jammer attached to that system gets one free effort to try to block the actual incoming weapon. You can see in this weapon, we actually did a really good job initially, but then of course things changed just a little bit, and several of those missiles actually did get through, but it took an awful lot of them to actually engage and strike the individual target itself. Again, I'm shooting at stationary objects, so this is pretty easy. So what exactly does that DECM look like to the crew that's taking the shot? Let's go pop over real quickly to SAM Simulator and take a look at what this is going to look like. So I've got an SA2DE, and I'm gonna go ahead and add myself one of these nice balloons. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a couple different types of jamming. The first one is called Range Gate Pull Off Jamming. I'm gonna go ahead and add this target. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get myself another target and we'll give it ran wrap. This one is neat. What this particular one is, it creates false targets. So we'll go ahead and add that one as well. We'll go ahead and grab one that's called angle deception jamming, which basically is going to try to spoof our angle ability to actually precisely point our radar at the individual target. And we're gonna go ahead and set it to none. So he's, here's gonna be all of our targets. We've got plenty of missiles to work with. Is it going to be that difficult for us? Let's find out. So I'm going to go pop over real quick into the SAM simulator, go ahead and get everything all started up. Since this is defensive ECM, you're not going to get any nasty lines on your search radars. As a matter of fact, things are going to stay relatively constant. So if I were to flip this on, you'd actually be able to see those targets immediately on my search radar because of the fact that DC ECM only works if you're being locked onto. So you can see I've got several targets. I'm actually going to go tell my crew to go ahead and aim in that direction. I'm going to go ahead and take my radar, spin it around, point in that direction, engage the transmitter, and now we can start seeing immediately the different targets. So I'm actually going to rotate the radar very gently to the side. You can see I'm obviously at the right wrong height here. All right, I see one target right there. I also see a little bit of ground clutter. I'm sticking my radar up a little bit. I can see another target right there, and you can see they're all kind of floating. So that looks like a pretty good target right there. I'm going to go ahead and I'll lock myself onto them, spin the radar around, go ahead and lock it in left and right. Then we're going to come over this way. I'm going to go ahead and lock it in up and down. And now it's time to lock it in range. So I'll go ahead and switch my radar modes to more intense. And something weird is happening. Do you see what's going on with that radar signal? Let me go ahead and flip my visibility mode. What do you notice about my target? Watch really carefully. Do you see this thing right here? Let me go ahead and zoom in even more so you can really make it, oh, too far, zoomed in too far. Let me go ahead and bring this thing down a little bit so you can actually see it pretty clearly. There we go, go ahead and I'll lock it in range real fast. Do you notice that there's this extra little beam that keeps coming off the top of it? If you watch really closely, you see this little thing snapping out of it? So what this system is doing is it's creating a copy of its radar signal, and then it is actually projecting that radar signal slowly away from itself to try to get my lock to go ahead and break from the individual target. This is called range gate pull off. Let me see if I can get you a better look at that. Zoom in a little bit. All right, there we go. Now watch this. I'll be able to get you a much, much better look at it. There it is. Take a look. So this is what I see as my target, right? But my system is designed to automatically lock onto the target and try to keep it logically centered. But watch what happens. Do you see this little piece here? This is a fake target that's trying to grab my range gate and pull it off of the target, denying me that critical range information. If I actually look at the target, you can see the target cleanly, but I keep getting this weird little piece here. Now let's say I want to go ahead and launch at it. I'll go ahead and prepare all my missiles real quick and only take some moment. Go ahead and lock myself onto the range here. You can see I've locked in range, but watch what happens. Now that I've locked myself in range, you see how this thing suddenly went like this? This is the false target. So it actually de-locked me. I know that's unlocked me. And you see how the radar had to re-snap to the original target? So as a result, I can't reliably measure this guy's range or engage the target. So what I'm gonna have to do is engage this using what they call a three-point attack. Or but yeah, basically a three-point guidance. I'm just going to have to point the missile where he is and try to aim right for the center of him. So go ahead and fire. Now remember, I can't track him in range. If he were to be moving, this could be a very, very tricky shot. So again, he keeps trying to break my lock by going ahead and pulling that out there. If I were to let my missile go ahead and lock him up right now, Oh, we got him. <laughs> so in this case, DECM, that roll failed. So that's one of the methods I can use. And you can see that that's actually really, really effective because it basically prevents me from getting reliable range information. Let's go ahead and take a look at what this target has as far as a security goes. So I'm basically instructing the SAM system to go ahead and lock onto our next target. It's gonna swing the entire battery around. Oh, yeah, you see how it disintegrated and broke up into teeny tiny pieces. So let's go ahead and grab on our next target. I'm going to flip it over this way and I'll make the whole radar system kind of flip in, try to get a good lock at this thing. 
And we're going to go ahead and grab it by hand real quick here. I seem to be having a little bit of trouble receiving the signal, but that's okay. Maybe we'll try to get this one instead. Again, we need an update from Battery Command in order to reliably point the weapon. Ah, there it goes. Hey, there he is. Okay, so this looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and lock him up in elevation. Let's lock him up in azimuth. And um, looks like a pretty good target to me. Doesn't seem like there's any problem whatsoever. You can see from my camera that I'm pointing right directly at the center of him. Looks like we're going to be in pretty good shape here. I'm taking a look at it. Everything looks perfectly fine. I'm going to go ahead and lock him up in range. And everything's fine. It looks like uh, we're good to go in this particular point. We'll go ahead and uh, launch on him right now. Fire uh, missile number two. Why not? This is going to go up and away. You can see it do its little zigzag. And in just a moment, you're going to see the missile appear from the bottom of the screen. It is going to go say hello directly to his front windshield. Boom. No problem. Now, was that one supposed to have some kind of jamming on it? The answer is yeah. But the problem was he was so close to us that we never even saw the jamming because of how close we were actually to it. Now, if I were to zoom out a little bit, you can see that you know, everything looks to be pretty normal there. Again, now he's tumbling down to the earth. He's smoked. Let's go ahead and grab that other target now and see what happens this time. We'll go ahead and unlock this one because we don't need to be watching something that got destroyed. Let's go ahead and spin the radar around. Here we go. And we'll, we'll take a look at another kind of jamming. So what's weird about this target? You know, I'm looking out the window going, hey, it looks pretty normal to me. Let's go ahead and acquire it in this way. Let's go ahead and acquire it in this way as well. But there's something strange going on here. Oh... Look at this type of defensive ECM. In this case, you can see that I have a total of five individual targets. One of these is an actual target. If you guess wrong, the missile will overshoot. As a matter of fact, if I look to my camera right now, I can see cleanly that I'm aiming at that particular target. If I were to adjust my actual range a little bit here, I'm actually already locked in on range. Let's go ahead and unlock my range so I can adjust it. Oh, there it goes. Ah. Let me go ahead and break the lock here so I have a little bit more control. There we go. Now watch what happens if I shift through the range. Each one of these targets is considered a valid target for us. We could actually try to engage any of these. So we as an operator now need to be able to predict which one of these targets is the enemy. Now imagine how long this would take in the real world where you're arguing with everybody else on your deck. Keep in mind if this were nighttime, we couldn't reliably see what we're shooting at. So which one of these is correct? Well, if I go like this real quick and switch range modes and then switch back to that mode, let's see what happens. No, changing ranges don't work. Maybe if I shut off my transmitter for a moment. Turn the transmitter back on. No, that didn't work either. So you can see we're in a bit of a pickle here as far as figuring out which one of these targets is the one we need to go ahead and engage. So we could predict that uh, maybe it's this one right here. So I've locked onto it. Everything's ready to go. We're going to do a three-point attack. Missile away. And now we have to cross our fingers that what we're launching at doesn't also have a different form of DECM that could go ahead and prevent us from accurately getting that range. Let's go watch it on the camera. Should be there in just a moment. All right, did we get it? Oh, we got lucky. Ha <laughs> ha. So this is one of the rare times I've played this game where I've reliably struck every target. Usually I end up overshooting or completely zipping by it. But one thing I didn't see and I really wanted to demonstrate better is what that other type of jamming is going to look like as well. So I'm just going to quickly reset this. Go back to a shoe look. Give myself plenty of missiles to work with. I really want to see if I can show you that angle jamming because it's actually really wild to watch. All right, start everything back up. Again, this will take just a minute because, again, you're probably curious. So we want to go ahead and uh, satisfy that curiosity. Oh, we need the generator to come on. Thank you. All right, let's go find that other target. Select the target. Kind of go ahead and order up the system to go ahead and rotate towards the target. We'll go switch uh, zoom modes here. I don't need to be in 25. We'll leave it in maximum range mode. Radar system spinning around. And there is the target. Lovely. What do you notice about that target? Do you see how it has this weird little distortion to it? Let me go ahead and flip to this mode. Ah, there it is. This is called angle jamming. Do you notice that the target itself seems to be breathing a little bit? You can actually watch the sides of it kind of tipping away from you. That's because it is distorting the electronic return of itself to go ahead and create a situation where there's no center of the target. So what does that mean for us? Well, let's go take a look at what this looks like. Right now, I'm pointing right at him, no problem. I'm going to lock into him, and I'm going to go ahead and lock into him over here as well. Now, what is my radar doing? Take a, oh, where is he going? 
Do you see how my radar now can't reliably identify electronically where the center of that target is? This is called uh, angle jamming, or angle deception, I should say. So as a result, my radar is basically going, whoa, trying to desperately lock onto the target, but it can't reliably do so, because like I said, it can't actually figure out what the center of the target is. So what I have to do is I have to manually point the radar and the missile together in order to successfully engage this target, which is uh, no small feat, I might add. I'm going to do the best I can with it. I think I'll probably miss, but some days I get close, some days I don't. Again, imagine if this were a moving, maneuvering target, and I'm sitting here trying to fit a little tiny handle, trying to get that thing perfectly lined up. Nice. Set it to three-point, launch. Fortunately for us, we happen to have a system that can reliably engage targets like that because it is a proximity fuse. The fuse itself will go off as soon as it gets close enough to the target. If that weren't the case, there's no way in a million years we're going to be able to reliably hit this target. Now, in the real world, such as in Vietnam, where they actually use this system, you, the people in the radar van would actually have to use small hand wheels in order to keep the target centered during the entire flight. Now, I'm going to go ahead and speed up time a little bit to demonstrate just how nasty this is. Now I'm slightly off to the right. Ooh, got it anyway. Now imagine if that were a moving target. Imagine if that were nighttime. How on earth could we safely engage that target? And that's just to show you how incredibly powerful that defensive ECM is. Now the neat thing is, like I pointed out earlier, I can actually shut my radar off and the target will disappear. DECM does not run itself if it does not have a lock signal on it. That is one of the biggest differences between OECM, which we saw with the noise jamming, and the DECM. Now, if somebody wanted to be awful, they'd use both types of systems at the same time. And you can get an idea of how difficult electronically it just was to engage, plus how difficult the electronic it can actually be. And now you understand why over in command, things are basically simplified to eliminate some of that trouble. All right, hopefully this video was helpful as far as uh, revealing. Let's see how close we were. Uh, we got within 39 meters of the target when we actually struck it. So that was absolutely amazing. Usually I can't get that close when you have to do it manually. But again, imagine if that were a target doing Mach 2. There's no way in the universe I'd be able to reliably hit that target. And you can see we did a three-point attack. All right, hopefully this is helpful and allows you to see a little bit of what's going on as far as what happens when you engage a target with DCM. Obviously in command, everything is super duper simplified. And yes, you can have more than one of these systems working together and still outmaneuver the weapon to safely dodge it. Other than that, enjoy.